Rightio folks, here we go, the albatross is actually looking pretty darn good. I've just covered this up because I've started priming some of the underside and the white there is starting to come through again. So right, what we're going to do is we're going to put the back tail on. Now this is actually a pretty nice process, the albatross does have a nice tail, I'm not going to lie. Very smooth and agile, just like the actual thing. Anyway, uh, I've it's, you can't, can't go wrong with this, which I've actually really like. Uh, you, hold on a second. Have I actually... <laughs> oh, goodness me. Alright then. Okay. I see that's a very tight fit. That's not coming out again now. Wow. Okay, the reason why I was just had a quick look then is because I made sure that these parts... I thought that was number one, which goes on this side, and number two goes on that side. And look at that surprise surprise, I got that modelled up. Just goes to show that um, how easy it is to get parts differently. Anyway, that's the tail in. Simple as that. And then the roof front, no, no, the elevator at the back sits in. If it will go in, come on. It's actually a quite a tight fit as well. Even this tiny little pegs that it goes on. Like that. And it's as simple as that, guys. That is actually really nice. I do like that. I do like the albatross tail. It does look really, really funky. Not gonna lie. Okay, so I'm gonna put some uh, poly cement. This is the uh, quick setting stuff. Just down there. Get it all nice there, make sure there's some of the locating tabs as well. I say locating tabs, the um, hinges. Are they hinges? Oh, goodness me, the amount of waffle that's coming out of my mouth today is unbelievable. Right, okay. Okay, I'm just going to put a bit, quite a fair bit on the end of here. Just get in between those tabs, like so, and there we have it, guys. Right, I'm just gonna make sure that is level. It should be, which having a look, that is actually spot on. You can't actually go wrong with that. If I just focus you, two seconds. Right, I'm gonna set it back to manual mode, which is like that, and it allows me to refocus. So if I can see that is absolute spot on a level. That is what you want. Look at that. I think you can just see anyway. But it's got some nice fabric texture all the way across the framework. Yeah, that is absolutely spot on. There we go. Right, so with that done, uh, last but not least, before I forget, is the tail fin. Again, straight onto these locating tabs. Okay, you have to put the end one in first. Come on. Hmm. Okay, that should be all in place. Just having a look. Yep, that's in place. Make sure it's level again. And there we have it, guys. Right. So that's all in place. Now, oh, try to get glue on that bit. There you go. Right, so, reason why we've put the stabilizers on, the elevator, sorry, and the rudder, is because um, one of the things that it does tell you to do in the book, and actually... Uh, what I've had a look online, it's actually saying to do this first and then start the painting because um, literally the rest, all of this, the only painting that is actually to be done on this aircraft is actually on the fuselage and that is it. 
the rest is all decals, which I'm actually a bit worried about. Um, let me just actually get you the, the illustration. Uh, um, I'm having a look. I'm just going to pop this down. Completely out of the way, so it dries. Uh, let's have a look. Right, okay. Let's have a look, see if I can refocus you. Okay. So this is the marking option we're going for. There you go. So this is the marking option we're going for. Uh, Cole Mirgas. I think that's how you pronounce it. This is actually annoying me now. There you go. That's better. So this is the marking option we're going for. So literally the only painting we're actually doing on this is the fuselage. And it's a very simple case of doing the wood grain and the fuselage and you got the rest of this tail section about half the fuselage all this is just basically a matte black and that as well as a spinner is white and a black band around the nose and obviously the landing gear is the colour that is your painting gear. so yeah so many people say it's a very simple scheme but then it's the wings as well that you guys are going to be worried about. Okay, so this is again this is the scheme I'm going for. Now, they're the wings. Okay, they're, they're the lozenge effect. So, we're going to have to put some decals on those. That is going to take some really patience for me. Very much patient indeed. But anyway, that's where it stands at the minute. That's the version I'm going for. Now, most people say I'll go for the red one because it actually it doesn't look too bad. You got this red one. This, Sorry, my notification is going to fight mad today. Although I do like this scheme. I'll save those for another time, probably, if I do get another kit or something like that. But this one, I believe you can get in the Rodan kit, which I'll, that's why I've left this one. If it wasn't for that version, I probably would have gone for more than two, but the woods grain just stood out for me because everyone says to me that the woods grain I make is actually pretty good. So I'm not trying to be big headed when I say that but it's just what people have gone by and I thought to myself yeah let's have a challenge and do a whole aircraft in the wood scheme uh, I think I did um, a couple of years ago uh, Edward's Albatross I did that in the woods grain so what the plan is now is I'm going to prime this all white it's had a coat of white paint over it but I need to go over again where I've, sold, where I've sanded all this down underneath and just basically go over the area somewhere I need to do up. Give it a primer, all white over the top. See where we come back to, and then I'll come back to you guys on make a start on this wood grain. So I'll see you in a second. Right, here, folks, we're back again. Yes, it's all primed up. Now, what we are going to do is we've got some oil paints now. Put a bit of tissue paper for a bit of reason. It just takes a bit of the linseed oil out, and that is where we're going to leave it. Also, we've got some brush cleaner and oil paint dilutant just in the bottom here. This is Zest It, an effective and effective solvent for oil paint. So, what we're going to do then is we're going to take some of this and make sure there's enough space to work on. Take a not an old brush, say, so let's have got one of these as well. And what we do, also have an old brush as well, like so. Just go have a bit of dilute and just on the end of the brush. And we're going to take some of this oil paint, just a bit of a dilutant, dilute it down just a bit. What we do is we're just going to go over the surface like this, just taking that out. To go over the surface. Right, ideally it shouldn't be this thin. Something like that, I should say. Like so. And just smear that across the model. Make sure I'm getting all the areas like so. So we don't want it too thick, we want it too thin either at the same time. 
you were just brushing it down like so. So be careful not to get all those other details. Now I already see just in that bit there the the oil paint making a nice wood grain effect, just like so. Like I said, we keep bringing this down. See already just by scraping it down like so, we are getting that wood grain effect. Also work the opposite way as well. Like so. So there straight away you can see I think you can see actually there's actually beginning to have an oil effect on there. So we're already starting to get an oil effect and what we do then is take this large brush. Now I'm just going to have a look at some photographs I found while online of this particular aircraft. Two seconds and we're going to see how the wood grains actually form like so. Let's have a look. Okay. Right, so what we're going to do is take this large, it's a bit, a bit of a fan brush really. I'm just going to go over the top like so, smoothing out get a nice wood grain finish just over the top of the surface now it's give or take, give or take too much away or Leave as much on, it's entirely your decision of what you do. But either way, that's how it looks like and that's how it comes out. And it's as simple as that guys, that is how you make a nice wood grain texture. Like so. Now naturally we've got some other panels where we'll pull it down, like here. We'll start pulling it down that way just to give some variation to different panels but there, yeah, there we go, it's as simple as that guys and it comes out a really nice colour as well so with that done, I'm going to leave that to work itself out actually, is it better making it with this colour? I don't know either way, that's how it's going to come out and we're going to leave it to sort itself out I'm going to come back without us moving over. I'm going to do the whole model and we're going to come back and we're going to see where we left off. So I'll see you in a second, guys. Hello, folks. Right, we're back again with the Albatross. It does look <laughs> pretty darn good. The decals have softened down really, really well to the surface of the model there. Just going to try and focus you a bit more better. There you go. Right, so what we're going to do is we're going to do all the panels there. Normally I use a, a wash anyway of the pre-wash, but obviously it's not going to be worth it. So I'm going to be doing an oil wash. So literally just get as, not as thin as anything, but at least a decent mix of your black paint, obviously. Just mix it up well and proper. And we're just going to literally have a touch and see how it gets on. Let's have a look. Obviously, there's going to be struggle doing the back. Just on here. No. Nope. Oh well. Uh, just have a look. Is that going to flow down? There we go. That's what you want, just to get all the little cracks just around there like so I think I'm using a bit of a thicker brush let me get a thin one let's have a look let's have a look if we get a thin one there we are get some nice new thin one and let's just let that fill up and let's just go tap just in there and bro just let it just flow into the panels and that is really what you need 
there we go. It's a long winning process but it's going to be really worth it when it's all done and such. Normally a lot of people use the Tamiya uh, panel line but obviously in the UK we have trouble getting it. I've actually got some imported on the way here. There we go. So we'll look forward to see how that gets on. But for now we've just got to make the amend of what we have. And that is really it. Just literally just tapping in in with that. Going on the edge. Like so. But it's just literally just getting into all these panel lines. Make sure the plenty to flow along the side there. As simple as that. So with that all done. This is going to be a slow, slow process. But there we go. This will look pretty bad. Hmm? Are you actually in focus? There we go, let's bring you up. There we go, just see it, just... Just say, so see it's all starting to go into the flow the panels now. It's taking quite a while to do so but there we go. There we are. Simple little technique but that's it. Right so I'm going to quickly go away and do that. We'll come back. We'll give it a matte varnish and see where we get on. Right here okay, while the oil paint is drying on the Albatross we're going to get away and start the engine. Now a bit of a mess up I did. Uh, I got the parts ready and there's two things that I took note of. Okay, I don't know if you can see any in instructions there. Let's have a look. There we go. Right, so this one is the Mercedes Benz. This is a 160 horsepower D3 engine. Uh, it says note, uh, 160 horsepower, 180 horsepower and 200 horsepower engines could be swapped between airframes. So it's giving you a choice for that. I was going to settle for this one. And then I accidentally cut the parts to this one. Okay. So, but now you know to worry, it does actually say that this one was fitted to the D5 version. Obviously, there's a difference between the D5 and the EVA. So, the EVA didn't have this one, whereas both the, D the 5A and the 5. This is where things get a bit complicated, a bit nerdy. But anyway, uh, this engine was pretty much a mix. That is actually more detailed on the top of the frame as well. I much admit it's got some more bolts, so you can get some more detail on that. And it does say as well the 160 HP, 180 HP, and the 200 HP engines can be swapped between airframes as well. So that's all well and done. Uh, I'm going to do it with 180 horsepower, uh, make it a bit more uh, better with detail and such like that. So anyway, with that done and said, I'm going to refocus you again, other way. There you go. So we're going to make a start on the actual engine components here. We've got a few bits and pieces. So as always, we're going to take some quick setting glue and probably a bit of extra thick cement. I had trouble actually fitting this on. Not this bit, but this bit. Now, one thing did confuse me. There's three pilot holes in the bottom here. And when you have a look inside, there's only two. And I've got a bit confused of how it went together, but it's no worry. This fits onto the top, like so, and it leaves an extra pilot, well, part anyway, and then this part fits over the top in that pilot hole. So I got a bit worried then that I've got the wrong parts mixed up, but it just goes to show that even on the tiny mistake, well not mistake, but even the tiny little things you thought you made a mistake on, then it's all well and done, just be careful not to do that. Okay, so it does say to leave uh, that part unglued so you can make your propeller spin, I don't know why, but it's going to be in the fixed shape I believe. And there we have it, right, so that's the, the sump and the main house, housing engine put into place. Just get a bit of extra quick setting on there. like so, and on this side as well, underneath there. 
And uh, let's have a look what's the next part. We can get this uh, part on as well, so we can stop worrying about that key component. And that just sits, not, look at that, a little, a tiny little snap, and it's in place. Hmm. I often forget how well a Winlux kit goes together. It's been quite a while since I've done the build on this, because I've been doing the, the wings for this section. They've been actually quite a pain. I've been doing the lozenge parts. Okay, so that's the uh, the engine housing and the sump done. Now the cylinders, they obviously sit on top. They actually go together pretty easy, obviously, as you know. Uh, two two part holes and uh, points into there. Now I will admit, I did actually have to take um, obviously on the injection molding. There's the parts that feed in. The parts I had to trim down in order to part this in. It's not a biggie. I've had seen worse, many many worse. But yeah, just to let you guys know on that, if you do come across yours like that, then you know what to do. Trim it down. Uh, just going to be a bit of glue here and there. And that sits just in there like so. Look at that. Just a bit of a squeeze, get in place. And again, a bit of extra quick setting. Just along the top there. And again, a little bit of squeeze. I'm going to put a peg on these. Hmm. Okay, it does go together. It's just quite difficult, obviously, getting the parts to stay together. Ah, that's got it now. And the same on the other end. Like I said, this is why I need an automatic focus point, but there we go. Right, so that's the engine housing. Let's have a look, see how it goes on. Uh, I think, let's have a look at the instructions. Let's have a look. Okay, do 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 do. Okay, just having a look, making sure we're not getting any parts converted or anything. No, I don't think so. Well, right, that's all right then. Sorry, I just took a shot there. Okie dokie then. Right, so obviously we go put onto there like so. Okay, we'll need a bit of pressure point to get that in place. And once again, a bit of the glue on there. That's sat on the top there we go once again a bit of quick setting in the middle of those like so there you go right so that done last but not least make sure it's all straight and level before we do anything else I think it is let's check Yep, spot on. We then have the actual house on the top here where the springs slot in. On top of the spark, well, actually no, spark plugs fit on the side there. So it literally is, as they say, a model within a model. There's no doubt about it. A lot of people like to customise these, get a bit of extra wiring done, and I think I may take on myself to do that. Get a bit of the spark plug wirings done, because... You can easily tell an albatross, even with the panels open. Okay, with that done, last but not least, I'm going to, obviously not going to bore you, because it's going to be going on for quite a while. It's about 10 minutes long, this part is. Okay. Ah, <sighs> drop open, why don't I? There you go, put that in there, that on top of there, and that, nope, some tweezers, 
Come on, come on. Oh. There you have it. Right, so with that all done, I'm going to leave you to it anyway. Well, you'll leave me to it, as they say. Is that the right way in? Yep, that's all the right way in. All sorted. So there we go. The D3 engine is all nicely done. I'll just bring you up and focus you in so I'll show you all this grand spanking detail. There you go. Yeah, that is actually pretty darn nice. I'm not going to lie. They're very beautiful. Right, so we've got a few little pumps and that lot to put on there. And obviously we've got the magnetos and whatever else. And then we're going to start by painting this all up. So I'm going to go away, put those parts together, come back and we're going to get all painted up. We're prime it nice and black. Yes. Right here folks, back with the detail. Look at that. It's absolutely bang on. Let me just get you focused. I don't think you actually quite focus just as well. There we go. Right, so you can see that all the pipe work is done. All pretty much all done and dusted there. Uh, the only things I haven't done is those pipe works. I was going to put them in but I thought, nah, put that bit. I'll do it later. So we're going to prime it black as always. Just go use XF1 straight from the bowl. Well, I'll say straight from the bowl. pre thin a little bit. Give it a nice base cut over the top. As such, getting all those hard to reach areas. There we go. And that's the kicking doesn't fit as I'm talking. So yeah, just give it a nice quick cut over the top. And that is where we have it. So as you know, that is it. We are come back. <sighs> it's gonna take a while to shut off about two seconds. We're quiet in it. There you go. Right, so it's gonna take a couple of uh Second, well, it's already dry now pretty much. We'll get it dry fully and then we'll go, go away, paint the rest up and we'll get cracking. There you go. <laughs> Took it out of focus there for a bit. Hello there folks, right, the albatross, yes, <laughs> looking pretty damn good, I'm not going to lie. Right, uh, we're going to move on to a couple of different things, if I can <laughs> if I actually find them and they're working in progress. Thing. Okay, so the engine is all done and dusted. I went away and... Painted it all up. I'm gonna bring it up. Show you guys some of this detail. Okay, let's have a look. There you go. Look at that. Um, the only thing I did, uh, I made the ignition wire. As you can see on the side there. Uh, that spark plug connected to the actual uh, starting starting engine at the back. Um, I'll just just show you. I've seen a couple of images and a couple of more modelers do this now. Get you focused up well, there we go. So the spark plugs, uh, the cables, they ran through this pipe on the side here. And then he ran to this start at the back here. And there was two of them, there was one on the other side as well. And all the wires came out, but after pain striking my eyes to there, I don't think I could get all these wires to come out of, out of this pipe onto this starting motor in the back. God, it's quite a ball ache. But it does look really nice, it looks even so much better with them on, I'm not going to lie. And from the other side as well. Does look pretty darn decent, no? It's pretty much a model within a model itself. But there you go, looks spot on. Hmm. Anyhow, we're going to install it into the actual aircraft now, so refocus you back and shot. It's much better than it. Neat, 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 the automatic. Okay, so, there's a bit of stuff on it in there. Let's take it off. Uh, one thing I did notice, which we're going to keep it hush hush, is to be quite honest, I did the wrong engine. Now, I only had a look. You know when they say, and the wing the wings can always read it through. Well, I missed one crucial thing out. On the one I'm building, it says use these parts. And of course, the parts were for the 160 horsepower engine I made the 180 so yeah not too much of a difference it's still an engine at the end of the day I don't think no one's going to really matter they did keep on swapping engines like it says but there we go so there we go it does look a pretty cool engine it sort of fits just right into here it's got a nice cradle it fits into it's just making sure it all fits into place 
and that there's no issues with it fitting on. Also you gotta make it level as well. So make sure it's not sticking out like a sore thumb. Like so. I think that's about right. Just double checking everything. There we go. Right, so that's sat in place now, and it does look pretty darn good just sat in there. Hmm, there we go. Pretty darn nice. Right, uh, so we're going to put some uh, extra fin, the quick setting stuff, just into the bottom here. Just, oh, actually, hold on. No, 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 we can't do that just yet. Um, I've just now realised there's a pipe that I haven't attached. Two, two seconds, I got carried away. Let me go back. Okay, sorry about that, I forgot to glue that uh, radiator pipe to the top there. Basically the radiator connects to the top of the wing, which is, yeah, all these complex pieces of work. <laughs> Just to make sure everything fits in okay. Rightio, so with that in place, this should... Come on, come on. Fit down. Into there, like so, just get it up and level. Oh, try to break it, Michael. It fits in, but then obviously, you move the aircraft, and it bolts back out again. Hmm. So there we go, right that's all in place, let's glue that, like that. That into there. And there we go. Did that actually fit into the side there? I'm not too sure. But there we go. We'll just have to soon see when it comes. It's just kind of difficult getting all these final bits and pieces together. But there we go. Right, so that's in place as it stands. Hmm. It does look pretty snug in that cradle, I'm not gonna lie. Let's have a look. I'm just seeing whether that that goes into the top of the radiator in the wing there. Uh just have a look. Okay. Okay, that's weird. Actually, I'll admit, yeah, it does. Okie dokie. Right, yeah, then, so with that done and dusted, we'll carry on as normal. I'll get all sorted out, so there we go. I'll see you in a second, guys. <laughs> 